Good morning, gladiators. We are about to play Salutio. Welcome, my friends, to season four of the games, gladiator. And I have a red spot on my head, which uh, has come from the helmet, as happens. It's been a long time since we've done a, a games, gladiator. Uh, season three was abandoned uh, after about 12 episodes just for a myriad of reasons. But I'm uh, excited to be finally kicking off season four with a game that is uh, close to my heart, Scald Against the Black Priory. And this is a game that's been in development for, for a number of years. And um, I've actually been in touch with a developer over these years, uh, a guy called L, not his real name, a pseudonym, from Scape IT. And he's a Norwegian developer who is very passionate about uh, classic old school role playing games in the same way that I am as well. Now, Scald, or Scald, however you want to pronounce it, was kickstarted a few years ago and was backed by such luminaries as Richard Garriott, aka Lord British, amongst others. And I think even Josh Sawyer uh, of um, Pillars of Eternity fame was involved. So, um, you know, a lot of people were really excited about this game, and, and those guys included. And now, um, Al is a solo developer, as I said, from Norway. And he has been passionate about recreating that old school 8-bit RPG experience that we see so little of these days. As you can see the little thumbnail here, uh, this is a game that harkens back to probably the mid 80s, late 80s, the games like Ultima and the Gold Box Dungeons and Dragons style games, Bard's Tale, that kind of thing. It's a game you just do not see much of anymore. And so when I first saw this game on Kickstarter, I was very quick to back it. And um, over the years, I, you know, I've been in touch with Al uh, and we've just, you know, shared game dev advice and tips and so on. Uh, and I, I really consider this guy one of the, one of the great sort of indie developers, um, one of the few who is building a game like this and succeeding. And I'm, I'm really excited to see the prologue finally on Steam now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to play maybe half an hour of the prologue and uh, and get into it and um, you know see what all the magic is about. So without further ado, after that long preamble, I'm a bit rusty in the game's creator. Thankfully, the uh, little spot on my head has faded, so less distracting. Let's jump into Skulled Against the Black Priory. All right, let's jump into, uh, this is, of course, as you just quickly saw flash there, the beta demo of the game. It's a work in progress. A lot will change, but uh, what you see here is the free prologue available on Steam now. So I really want to urge you all to jump in and check it out on Steam and leave a good review if you can. Uh, it's currently sitting at 98%, which is really high. And the only negative review of almost 70 reviews is someone that had a graphical glitch, which has been fixed in this new version 2.0 which just came out today so let's create a new character and it, it, instantly this title screen harkens back to the uh the classic commodore 64 era palette uh, and for those who are too young to remember that which is probably most of you the commodore had a very limited graphic palette and was famous for these purples and cyans and so on uh and he's done a great job um of recreating that let's create a new character Character creation. So you can be a cleric, uh, a magos, which is I guess a mage, a rogue, and a warrior. Now this is all actually, um, it's a mixture of mouse and keyboard, so I believe you can play most of the game with keyboard only. Uh, so we'll see how we go. Uh, cleric, I tend to favor warriors in general, because it's like the sort of getting stuck in of being a warrior. And if you've ever seen me play games guy here before, usually I'll choose the warrior class. I guess, after all, this is a fantasy game and I am not that warlike in real life. <laughs> uh, okay. A warrior is a frontline fighter that can take and deal large amounts of damage. Core attribute strength. So we're going to choose that. Primary stats. We've got strength, agility, fortitude, intellect, and presence. And we've got 25 points to spend. So um, let's choose buff up some strength, a measure of the character's brawn and physical power. We've got 20 points. So I'm going to get that to 18 
fortitude, how tough and resilient. You want a tough warrior as well. I'm really sort of min-maxing here to make him a bit quick as well. We're going to leave intellect and presence. So let's see what they do. Mental acuity, recall, and analytical steel. Now we've got a, a big dumb brute. We won't be needing that. Nor presence, which is their ability to read and react to the surrounding environments and people. Our, our man is basically Conan. He'll have none of these powers. Uh, and influences diplomacy. You can already see there is uh, some sort of synergy of skills and so on and, and some classic RPG depth there. Three points remaining. Strength, agility, and fortitude. Okay. Done. Okay, now you can choose uh, the character's appearance. You can see up in this little corner here, uh, that's our little avatar. And this reminds me so much of curse of the azure bonds and um pool of radiance and the the gold box games which are the original dungeons and dragons games where you could sort of create your own little characters and i love that um al has put this into the game skin color light dark hair color blonde black gray brown we'll go brown because it's, it's me hairstyle you can choose a bunch of different um pixely ones they're very small but uh that suits the game fine it might be nice, I don't know if it really worked to sort of be able to zoom in on this just for more detail, but you know, it might look a bit weird pixely. So uh, yeah, go back to the brown hair. Give ourselves that top knot maybe. Green. We're gonna go with blue because uh, it's my favorite color according to my son is, Daddy, what's your favorite color? And I always say blue. <laughs> Uh, these are the, the amazing bits of information that you get when you uh, tune into the Gadam's Gladiator. And that's our portrait options. We'll go with the default one for now, because he's got a bit of a beard like me. And we will, you must choose a name for your character before venturing forth. You must gather your party before venturing forth, just like uh, in um, Elder's Gate. So we're going to go with Games Gladiator. Gladiator. Venture forth. Ah, three and ten characters. Okay, so let's go with uh, He Chaos, who is, of course, one of the villains from My Swords and Sandals series. Okay. On the dark, raging seas of the Outer Isles, a lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves. The moan of creaking timbers, the tang of preserved fish. Your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the dimly lit ship's hold. Now, you can skip the intro, but we're going to play through it because I want you to see what this game is all about. Suddenly, something strikes the hull and the ship rocks violently. Your heart begins to pound and a feeling of unease grows in your stomach. Should we rise, well rested and ready to go? Get up, mouth dry and head pounding or rouse yourself from deep meditation? I think this warrior has had a tough night, so we're going to get up with a dry mouth. Ah, my head! You get to your feet and become aware of agitated voices shouting up on deck. Something is not right. You should make your way up top and get a bearing on the situation. Be on your way. All right. So I love the writing style already. It's uh, one of the hallmarks of this game uh, that people have noted is that it's really well written. And he's described it as a sort of, uh, you know, Lovecraftian horror meets sort of fantasy. Uh, and I really think that's a pretty good combination. So let's walk around. Notice the, uh, the light that sort of um, flickers in and disappears. It's a really neat trick. It's a lovely shader. So, there's a wooden chest. Let's have a look. Oh, what? No enemies. Okay, I pressed combat accidentally. Okay, we don't need to do that. We're going to open the chest. Okay, in the chest is a dagger. And now this screen reminds me a lot of Ultima Underworld's uh, circular thing. So. We're going to get all. Picked up dagger. Now, I wonder, if I click on the character, let's have a look. Because it's been a while since i played the beta, so I've sort of forgotten how it all works. But, you know, we're treating this as if you've never seen it before. These are our spells, quests. I need to investigate what's happening with the Zephyr, which is the ship. Uh, faction overview. Map. And... Um, Our inventory is here. Now I want to make sure that that's equipped to use dagger. Once you figure out the system, it uh, looks pretty straightforward so far. 
the little tick means this is our inventory items and it's some armor there okay now back we go we're armed now and you can see i've got a dagger on my hand that is a small thing to the uh the viewer but that's a big a big bit of code for him to add in there you know it can be quite tricky creating sort of pixel art um ragdoll i mean ragdoll paper doll figures that you know show your shield and your armor and your helmet and everything it's a lot of work so i'm really glad that i'll took the time to put that in there because me as a player i love seeing my character holding the weapons that he's supposed to be holding and that's something i've always tried to put in my games to your surprise you realize that this door has been locked from the outside it doesn't budge perhaps you could slip from the lock that slip the lock with a thin blade well that's my uh narrator job cut <laughs> If you have not already done so, you must equip your dagger. Okay, use it. This is a tutorial, basically. Let's, we'll try breaking the door. We're very strong. Door doesn't budge. I think we only had strength 19. Okay, uh, let's use the dagger. Gain some experience. The door swings open. I won't read it all, because otherwise this video will go for six hours. But you can follow along by reading quickly. Battle erupts. All right, we're being attacked. What will attack us? Rabid rat. A rat. It's always rats, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna attack. Got him. So I'm gonna move down to this next rat. You've defeated your enemies. Each party gain member gains 146 experience. And loot everybody. Great. Already, that's fun combat to me. I like the fact that the combat took place on the map. In an earlier version of this, it went to a separate sort of tactical screen, much like you would have seen in Ultima 3 or Ultima 4, that kind of thing. And I really love that uh, Al has put the tactical combat on the map. So there's a ladder going up. You want to ascend? You emerge onto the ship's lower deck, and as your eyes adjust to the darkness, you become aware of a hulking figure standing in the shadows. Ikeos, there you are at last. I don't think he's Scottish. He probably isn't. Growls a rough voice. Who's there? Show yourself! Freeze and listen, or lunge at the figure. This guy, we're gonna talk to him. It's Roland. Where the tides you been? Why are you skulking about? The brute chuckles. A shadow suit a face just like this. Fine. <laughs> no matter. There's trouble you needed on deck now. I'm gonna stop with the accents because I'm doing a terrible job. Alright, what for? What's all that noise? Have we arrived? Let's get this over with. As I said, I was going to stop the accent in another one. The island's in sight, but that damn guilders refuse to land. They want to turn back. If we turn back, we lose our shot at the girl. Did they say why? Um, did they say why? Okay, um, let's... Let's, uh, Roland, let's go. Few sailors up ahead. I think we've got a battle ahead. Is there a way past them? No, I think we got a fight ahead. Let, we're, we're a bruising warrior. Let's fight. You and Roland begin making your way towards the commotion on the deck. So Roland has joined the party now. That's awesome. Um, what's he got? Roland has some traveler's guards. He's got a bastard sword, which does 1 to 10. So he's another kind of bruising warrior as well, which is um, interesting. Uh, yeah, so we've got two warriors, which may mean the other party is, um, you know, not so balanced, but early on, I don't think that should matter. Let's head. Through the door, of course. The sailor grabs you, wild eyes. Dead emperors, it's coming for us, it whispers to me. Get away from me. Well, we don't have um, diplomacy, so we'll try that anyway. Oh, it worked. We avoided the fight. Excellent. So, you, is there anything in those chests? No. Lovely. It's really nicely. The graphics are fantastic. Um, the done by a guy called Memento Mori. Um, he's done all the pixel art, and you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, and he's just really captured that era. But you know, everything about this 
feels old school, but it has the sort of the modern, um, you know, the niceties you get in modern games. You try going back and playing some of the classic Ultima games, and you may find, what am I doing? We should be in combat. We probably shouldn't be. Oh, are we in combat? I might have triggered combat without knowing it. I can't remember. No, we're not even in combat. What have I done? Okay, that's a little bit confusing, but that's uh, um, that's on me because I'm trying to talk and um, I pre keep pressing enter instead of the space bar. So I've got to learn how to play the game a bit better. That's what you get when you come to the games. Later you get uh, less than quality uh, gameplay from me. <laughs> You'll merge on the deck, but you get nice voices and see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn the ship shakes violently in the grip of a storm as lightning tears across the sky i love these pictures you can see here um they really add a lot to the sort of flavor of the game we've already we've seen a couple of them so hopefully they're scattered throughout the game okay let's talk to the ship's captain i paid you for passage to the shore did i not Okay, he thinks the place is cursed. We must sail on! There's desperation in the captain's voice. Have at you, man! Let's fight the crew. We've got a battle on our hands. Okay, this is a big battle here. Let's see how we go. So it's all turn based, and everyone sort of takes their turn based on their speed, essentially. Um, we've got our own crew as well, so we should be out to that number. And you have this nice, you can even repeat the last move, which is kind of cool. So if you had, you know, a spell lined up or anything, you could... Um... Yeah, this really feels very much like the gold box games in terms of combat, which is no bad thing at all. Tactical, but fun. So we are, yeah, we've got this battle in hand. Where's he going? Okay, loot all. Okay, you rest up. Continue. Suddenly, huge monstrous tentacles burst from the water around the ship. Look at this awesome artwork. A huge sort of, um, you know, Kraken type figure. All right, like, I think we're going down. I think we're going to be shipwrecked. Oh, Roland's going overboard. Do we leave him to his fate or do we go to his aid? Let's help him. You we'll dash towards the ship's fractured rail, dodging holes. Roland hangs on by one arm. Try to grab him. You miss. I think we were meant to miss. We may see him yet. We have to abandon ship. Oh. You hear the terrible rending of wood giving into flesh. Beautiful writing. This is this is really cool. Now already there is so much atmosphere in this game. Look at this, that you just don't even find in a lot of modern RPGs. Honestly, uh, I can't you know say enough good things about the the atmosphere in this game. And that's our that's our introduction, and that's really awesome. So we're going to save that game in case anything goes wrong. This is an auto save, but we'll call that one save slot one. So let's move on. So this is a pro, um, you know, not a prologue. This is two weeks over, a little flashback. There's a little dog. Hello, dog. The dogs, do you want to pat the dog? Of course. You've always got to be able to pat the dog in the game. That's a lovely little touch there. So let's see where we can go here. Is there anywhere we can go? Talk to the guard. Can you trade with him? Wow. You steal something? No. You attack him? Doesn't want to fight. <laughs> That's nice. You 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 know you could get yourself into a bit of trouble there. Now they're gonna obviously not gonna let us out of the villa, but it, what's that? Small, intensely colourful flowers cover the ground. A sickly sweet scent wafts up you as you step on them. Nice little bits of flavour text there, and I think that's really important when creating a world. 
These portraits are fantastic. A woman stands before the main entrance to the villa. Her posture speaks of a graceful, coiled power, that of a jeweling ace. Okay. I'm going to go visit Master Cato now. All right. Um, let's get this over with. I remember the way. Ah, we're getting escorted. Leave us alone. She's joined the party. We didn't come here to reminisce. Now, one thing, um, it's a very minor point here, but you see how we've got two people in this party, but you only see the one avatar on screen. It would be really cool to be able to see um, the other characters trailing you, even in using some kind of um, sort of AI path finding. There are probably technical limitations to why that isn't possible, but in games like Ultima 6, I really liked having the party sort of move around behind me. So, you know, if that comes to the final version, that will be awesome. But a lot of this can be feature creep. You know, the owl is going to find as the prologue comes out, so many people are going to be offering suggestions and, um, you know, requesting changes and so on. But he's probably thought of all of this already. And there's always reasons for why something happens or doesn't happen. As a game developer, I know that feeling all too well. Um, we'll leave the guardian. He doesn't got much to say. Um, examine the statues. So already the um, there's some world building going on and a sizable map as well for this little kind of villa. There's a pool, a reflecting pool with perfectly still surface. For some reason it fills you with dread. That's no good. All right, Cato Baron sits tall in a tasteful but modest reception room. This guy, this guy looks a bit like he chaos. There you go. Go figure. It's not ob obviously. You take a seat across a formidable desk from him. So he um, is going to give us a little quest, a um, little backstory about um, find my daughter, basically. Why me? So she left on a ship and, you know, we were supposed to take her somewhere, but that ship was attacked. Okay, what am I supposed to do? High mercenaries travel to Idrim, being a search in a port of Horan. Mercenaries? Seek out Roland. Roland was, of course, the character from the prologue. I work alone. But you have to consider him. All right. I accept. For the gold. <laughs> what a hero. What a hero. Uh, okay. Let's get on with it. Let's just get on with it. You have my word, Cato. Okay, back to the present day. You are awoken by a cacophonous cries of gulls circling you. Your body is a mass of pain and exhaustion. You drag yourself. Look at that. Uh, looks like a, an inhospitable place there that we're about to um, visit. Okay, so there is um, a bit of reading and a bit of backstory there, but... In a role-playing game, you need to set this world building, and that's a fantastic introduction to the game. You could, of course, skip all that if you wanted to just straight jump straight to the shore. Uh, and, you know, on repeat plays, maybe you would do that. Is that a lighthouse? Cool. Do we want to enter the lighthouse? Let's leave for now. That's a boat. That might be our shipwreck. This is where our boat was wrecked. Let's have a look around. Fog and rain, stench of rotting flesh. This is a miserable place. Who are these guys? Hostiles have not spotted the party yet, so shall we fight them? Battle erupts. Charge. What is that? A crab. Poor crab. He was just minding his own business on the shore. Let's loot him. We got a chitin, which is um, some kind of armor, I believe. Let's have a look. It might be something we can forge. Uh, I wonder if we can. Ah, oh, yeah, it's for crafting. So we will be able to craft something with that later. I keep meaning to click that to leave, but you press escape. Who are these guys? A dead sailor. Examine. Brutally murdered. So they made it to the shore and they were murdered. That's awful. Anything on the corpse? No. Ah, alas, they were good sea dogs. 
So this is the sort of fog of war that slowly, um, you know, unveils as we move through the the area. Was there anything else here? Let's have a quick look. I might have missed something. Of course, I'm kind of rushing through this to try and show you. Ah, here we go. A small group of exhausted figures sit huddled around a small campfire. One of them suddenly notices you, and the men stumble to their feet. Uh, yeah. To battle. Charge. Okay, we're outnumbered here. Do you have any spells? Use feet. Uh, more. Okay. We only have three. Oh, you can buy it. Look at these. Ah, interesting. We could get all these various feats when we level up. Do we even try to level up yet? Or have our stats automatically gone up? I should have checked that out before battle. But we don't have any spells or anything now, so it's it's back to battle. Okay. One of the joys of being a warrior combat is simple. I'm sure with a, a mage or something, you're going to have a lot more... Um, options but you know you'll be a little um you know in trouble early on as mages are often glass cannons okay one down our health is at about half health which isn't great you're gonna want to try and heal after this fight or can i flee i think we need to flee this fight We're in trouble. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right, we'll die, we'll die fighting then. Backed into a corner by some barrels. What a noble way for us to die. You know, if I hadn't been so cowardly, I could have nearly probably beaten these guys. You have died! Um, let's load that save game again. Lucky I saved. Oh, no, maybe the auto save. What was that auto save last? We'll leave the area. Let's get back to the mainland. Um, okay. Alas. Alas for us. Alas for you, the audience. You're being swarmed by monstrous, monstrously overgrown rats. Use diplomacy. <laughs> we bribe the rats with some cheese, perhaps. Cannot bribe them. Sneak away. Ah, combat erupts. All right. I warn you, rat. I'm no one to be trifled with. Got a critical hit on him. He's no match for us. Loot all. Whatever the rat had to offer us, I'm not even going to bother checking. Leave the area. Let's just make our way through the mountains north. I want to explore a bit of this coastline. And I'm guessing there's more random encounters like that. Is that a cave up there? You see a figure thrashing violently at something. Oh. Move closer. It's Roland. Excellent. I didn't think you'd make it. Good on you, Roland. You survived. The mission needs you. See, he would have helped in that battle. So we could always go back there um, to that cabin. and um... <laughs> He's told me to drop the bloody heroics. That's what I've been... This is what I do. I'm a hero. Let's get going. Roland nods sullenly. Let's just go. Beautiful ride. This is really atmospheric. I feel like I'm not doing it justice by, you know, moving through so quickly. There he is. His big belly and a few... Um, oh, no. That's not Roland. That's a few other guys. Uh, troublemakers. Oh, let's sneak past them. Oh, there they are. Battle rocks. I need some vengeance against... Uh, I need to prove my worth.
one thing I'm still getting used to is this sort of um, continue button. It almost sort of like, I'd almost wouldn't mind the option of auto continuing uh, back to my turn because I feel like it's that one extra move that I don't really need to make, but I'm sure there's a reason for it maybe to heal and do other things like that. So loot all. Oh, we've leveled up. We buy some feats. What do we want? We should get Mighty Strike. Can we afford that? Excellent. Now that's going to be a special feat that we can use in combat in the future, which is cool. Battle erupts again. So they're everywhere. Should we try our Mighty Strike? Use. Oh, it's Roland. Does Roland have any abilities? No. Let's use Mighty Strike. And that did 8 hit points of damage against the Mad Reaver. These creepy looking guys. Oh, why'd I do that? Fool Roland. You're embarrassing me and yourself. I'm guessing you still drunk a lot of seawater, so. <laughs> Great music as well. I haven't brought up the music enough, but it has a real sort of MIDI ad lib vibe, which is really classic sort of of the era. Okay, loot all. Got a dagger and a short sword. We should change to a short sword. Oh, we should change. I keep pressing escape. Okay. Uh, we got Roland as a bastard sword. I'm going to use the short sword. Okay, that should give it allow us to do a bit more damage. Leave the area. Sneak away. I follow down to this village. A refugee camp. Ah, cool. Music changes, so we're in a peaceful location now. There's people we can talk to. Lots of lovely little details of the rain, the f flames of everything. Oh, an armored woman, cleric. This is just really starting to build into a really nice, interesting story here. And it just goes to show how much can be done just with text and simple graphics. If the writing is good enough and the, you know, the atmosphere is there, you can really, you know, you don't need AAA budgets for, you know, to create a great role-playing game. This has shades of Knights of Legend as well, which is another classic origin game. Here's a refugee camp. You can go in and outside the houses. Notice how the, uh, the roof disappears and you see inside the house. A warm bed. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Use the bed. Make camp. We're gonna rest. Ah, oh, cool. There's all these options as well. You can choose to be on watch, forage. So if you're into sort of setting your party and assigning them activities and so on, it's a lovely little detail there. I'm glad I found that. Um, and rest. All right, we're fully rested. Break camp. Now we're awake. Wow. Well, we're going to leave Scal there, and we've made it to the refugee camp, which is small progress, and we've had some mishaps along the way, uh, thanks to my rather impulsive and headstrong nature. But I'm, I'm role playing, right? That was a lot of fun. I really, uh, I did have fun playing Scal, and, and so far, it's really living up to what I hoped this game would be. Uh, and I've been playing it on and off since the alpha version, so. Not sure when the final game will be out, uh, when it's done. Uh, that is such the nature of game dev. But if you like these kind of games, please support the developer, um, Scape IT, and of course Al, uh, because he's worked very hard on this for quite some time. And, um, you know, there aren't many games like this. And you know, it's very hard to make a game like this by yourself. Years and years and years of work. You go back and look at, even though the tools are better, the sheer amount of writing and content and development that goes into a game of this size is just, you know, breathtaking. So 
I really hope it does well for him. And uh, you, of course, can check out this on Steam as we speak. And I'll put a link in the uh, comments below. Well, did you enjoy the Games Gladiator? It has been a while since the last one, and I'm very rusty. Uh, I've got to tell you, it's been so long. But these are fun to do, and I, I do uh, enjoy just being a gamer again for you know half an hour a week of just not working on swords and sandals, not being a game developer, not putting my game dev hat on too much, just sit back and enjoy and play some games. So if, if you have enjoyed this video and, and spending your time with me today, I thank you. And if you are not subscribed and you like this content, join in, join in, <laughs> subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz, you know what it is. Uh, I welcome your company, I welcome your comments, and it's wonderful uh, to have you guys with me today. I'm going to try and do one of these every week, some weeks two, some weeks zero. We'll see how we go, but uh, let's see if we can get the game clear back into regular rotation in the Whiskey Barrel Studios channel. So until next week, I hope you enjoyed Skulled Against the Black Priory. And my friends, bye for now.